showed the Royal Road at the Napa Valley Film Festival, okay. um, which is a really great festival, but it's a very like conventional, straight film festival. Okay. And it's like, blah, 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 the Royal Road, you know, the history of the Spanish colonization of California. And the first screening, like all these people came in and I'm like, you know, looking at the audience and it's like, oh my God, like a bunch of like older, straight, white couples. And like, and I'm like, I think they're here because they think this is a conventional documentary about the history of the Spanish colonization of California. And they're expecting it to be like, yeah. you know, da, da, da. and as I was saying about the joy of life, I had this experience where it was like, after about 15 minutes, basically half the audience left, got up and left because they were like, what is this? Like, in her presence, it's necessary to tone down my enthusiasm, lest I reveal the true extent of my interest in her. It's only on leaving her that I'm able to wallow in the details of our interactions. I cherish these aftermaths, the immediate reminiscing monologue where I tell myself everything that just happened. There's so much to say, so much not to say. If she's at home on this lazy Sunday, what is she doing? Cleaning the house, doing dishes, or something at her desk? She could be in bed naked, fresh out of the shower. She could be thinking of me, though it's impossible to tell whether she ever does. I speculate wildly. Would there ever be any legitimate circumstance to steal a kiss from her? Some extraordinary disaster or a temporary loss of sanity? A scenario involving apparent imminent death? Maybe an earthquake or some other natural catastrophe? These inconceivable melodramas punctuate my waking life. Stipe pining over unavailable woman is, you know, this is not what I signed up for. And so at the second screening at the festival, I watched the audience come in. Similarly was like, okay, straight couples, you know, older couples. And like, they think that this is a conventional documentary. And so in my intro, I was like, so this is what happened at the last screening. Um, and I'm just going to tell you, what you're about to see, it's only 65 minutes long. I think it's going to be different than what you were expecting. You might be like, what is this? <laughs> but I think if you stick with it, you will find that even though it's not what you expected, that it will speak to you. And um, I really would encourage you to stick it out. <laughs> And like, I don't know, I said it something like that, you know, basically mm -hmm. anticipating that they were going to walk out after 15 minutes if I didn't say something like, this isn't what you were coming in expecting. And in the Q&A afterwards, there were all these straight white guys who said, you know, who were like, wow, I'm so glad you said that. And I'm so glad I stuck with it. And it was, you know, really powerful, blah, 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 blah. They were more able to identify with this voice yes. this disembodied voice because it wasn't like they weren't like watching it going like oh that's this like woman and who has nothing in common with me and like why would i identify with that why would that speak to me and and to connect with the similarity of like oh yeah i pine over unavailable women yes. too and like and like it's vulnerable and it's hard yeah. and it's definitely a reason why the cis have been can find themselves is because of the like the like the visual imagery of the landscape just like 
you don't have to like try to project yourself onto a woman's body yeah, yeah. to be like I'm experiencing this. Like you just get to experience it in your own body because there is no body to look at. That's that's exactly it. That's a really brilliant observation. <laughs> <laughs> that is like I'm like wait, all I've been making films for twenty five years and that never occurred to me. Like I feel like that's what you've been saying. <laughs> like that's why you don't want pedestrians in the shot. Like not just because like they're distracting. But also because, like, I think that, like, when we see people on screen, we go, that's, I'm, I'm supposed, that's supposed to be me. Right. Growing up in the Midwest as a gender dysphoric tomboy, watching movies was a cherished relief from the awkward realities of daily life. Emulating the actors in my favorite classic Hollywood films I happily acquired a new borrowed masculine persona. Experiencing myself as a fictional character has been a mode of survival for me ever since. I mean, this is actually, and I actually grapple with some of these things in the film itself like the stuff about identifying with gary cooper yes and all and the and all the celebrities jimmy stewart yes and, well identifying with movie stars and the characters that they play yeah. and that you know i mean it's like this endlessly fascinating thing but to your point you know is like yeah and that is exactly what we do in any given movie conventional movie feature-length narrative or documentary that we're like, oh, look, that person is this real person and that's they're like me or they're not like me or I don't identify with this or, um, as we know, particularly from reading Laura Mulvey, um, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, 99% of, you know, film history is like cis, white, straight, men, able-bodied men, whatever, these, you yes. know, that is like, this is the universal character who everyone will identify with. And basically that everyone else is forced to identify with. Yes. And like, is like, because men are the heroes <laughs> and everything else is like, oh, it's a women's film. <laughs> it's a gay film. It's a black film. It's a, yeah. and like, and I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like to me, the most important thing, most uh, gratifying thing is what other butch dykes or other folks who have you know complicated gender identities connecting with my work and feeling like it I'm saying something that resonates for them in a way that is you know is valuable um and helpful and you know emotionally moving um and it works for other people too and like that's cool that we're like all human yeah, and I, and I do think that they are human expressions of vulnerability that yeah. that everyone experiences in different ways, and um, you know it's good to to be aware of our common humanity. God, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>